Hey, how's it going? So, if you're watching this video, you probably got clickbaited a little bit from my goofy little thumbnail. But it really is about being two steps ahead. Now, Nikakava Adakavo, Nikakado Avocado, uh, definitely tricked us all. Definitely manipulated us all, I guess. Is he a bit of a gooner for it? I think so, but he's a cool guy for doing that. It's kind of crazy. However, do you need to get fat for 12 years, say that you don't have any problems, and then proceed to bamboozle everybody in the span of two years, lose all the weight, and say, ha ha, teehee, I fooled you. I was two steps ahead and two years ahead of you. That's crazy. Probably not. You probably don't need to spend 14 years of your life doing that, but, or however many years she's been on the YouTube scene. But what you can do is simply be two steps ahead in your general life. So now that you understand what we're going over, please stick around. Um, but the, besides the point is being two steps ahead is a daily struggle. In our last video, we discussed uh, different habits that you can create for yourself to be a little bit better than you were yesterday. And we're going to expand upon this today, but I want to bring up a very good point is that these right here, this is so important to do, is that it, you, 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 have, you have to be two steps ahead of yourself and others. This isn't a manipulation tactic. This is simply just knowing what to do. Knowing how to be better than yourself. And I think you need to understand that your actions and your words have consequences. I think you need to understand that the things that you do in small ways can come off rudely to others. However, you coming off rudely to others is not ideal. Doing these things are going to screw you over long term. And I just had an example of this today. While I shouldn't get into detail of it, I'm, I'm watching for traffic. I'm, I'm not looking at you, buddy. Um, but, sorry about the buddy, I don't mean to say it like that. But what I mean is, is if you, if you don't understand your own actions and you, you hear yourself, you need to overthink. You need to overthink about everything that you do because your actions have consequences. The words you say have consequences. So... I just try to let somebody buy me. Anyways, but your actions have consequences, good or bad. There's definitely karma in the world. It's very real. Karma is very real. If you are nice to others, you're going to have a better time in life. I promise you. And I know you've heard it 20,000 times since you're little. But the truth is, is that your reputation precedes everything around you. Your reputation and your title. Two things that you can look at somebody and know. You ask your coworker, you ask your friend, hey, what about that guy over there? You have someone vouch for them and your reputation means everything. Everything that you post on social media, everything that you send to your friends, every time you text somebody, every time you interact with one of your own friends, guess what? When you start speaking things about people and you start maybe gossiping or maybe uh, uh, talking directly about it to others or maybe, you know, coming off the wrong way to people, you can explain it away and you won't get fired for it today. You won't, you, nothing will happen bad to you today. But tomorrow, that adds up. See, and, and this is something that I take to my heart and this is what I've always thought is that everyone has a ledger of different things about them. You have a ledger of everything that you've done bad and everything that you've done good. This is to others, this is to yourself, this is to, to people around you, to, to actions that you've done. These are things that you, you can't take away. You, you really can, you can only be forgiven in, in God, in Christ, I guess. However, the things that you do 
the, the things that you say to other people, they never get taken away. This is a perception of someone in your mind. You have a list of pros and cons that someone is crafting from you. And every interaction that you have with them can either put you up or lower on their list in terms of respect, uh, honesty, friendship, a good coworker, and perception of yourself. Having a good relationship or having a good reputation in work is very important. If everyone likes you, people ask about you, and even if you make a certain little mistake, your managers may ask one of your coworkers about something you did, and you say, oh no, he, he probably did whatever. I, I was really busy the, the other day and it, was, it wasn't his fault. That right there is because you have a good reputation that you were saved. If you have a bad reputation, you're going to get thrown under the bus. People are going to go, well, they did this and this and this. Where usually someone would give you the benefit of the doubt, they won't give you the benefit of the doubt because they just don't care. And it's not that they don't care, it's not that they're angry, it's not that they're happy about you or, or trying, to, trying to sabotage you. It's just genuinely, this is their perception of you. And yesterday's event was, okay, I know this, I know this, this is the facts. I don't know anything as, about them, but they certainly don't, they, they don't cross my roster as a good person. So that's just how it was. I really can't vouch for them. I really don't understand their intentions. So with the right intentions, you can see someone and go, oh, that was a mistake that they made. I, I think they'll improve. Yeah, if they have the best intentions. I think they'll work it out. But if you have the worst intentions with people and people sense that, people smell that on you, people hear that from you, people see that from you, and cr quite frankly, they just feel it. It's a sixth sense that people get. You are here to do something malicious. You are here to say things bad and no one can trust you. And when no one can trust you, they're not very trustworthy themselves. They're not very nice behind your back. So I'm, I'm really sorry if, if you're in that situation, but the reality is is that you might not be in everyone's best interest or you might not be in everyone's best heart. And a certain percentage of you needs to say, I don't care what other people think. And another percentage says, oh my God, my reputation is abysmal. I need to fix that immediately. Because the reality is, is that as humans, we are communicators. We are social creatures. And that means that your intelligence really doesn't mean anything. The amount of money you make really doesn't mean anything. At the end of the day, your communication skills and how you present yourself and how your reputation is means everything to people. People respect you or don't respect you, hate you or love you because of the way you talk to them. Not because of how good you are at your job or how smart you are, is your communication skills. And I'm still working on that because I know I'm not perfect. And when you're watching this video, I hope you're not saying, I'm the most perfect person in the world. That's great you have confidence, buddy. But guess what? You don't have anything except that. I witnessed an example today that is very much, you can know everything. You can be the best at your job. You can be the smartest person in the room. But at the end of the day, if your communication skills are terrible, you're done. Because humans are social creatures. And if you don't, if you're not liked, if you're not humorous, if you're not uh, uh, compatible with a lot of people, if you're not intentionally trying to make other people's day better, and you're trying to put other people down, well, they don't like that. And as it works their way up the chain and, and, and people start adding things up, it, it won't, it maybe won't affect you today. Maybe your little thing that you did today won't do anything, but it's gonna catch up to you. And if you're watching this, you know who you are. I genuinely have no hard feelings towards you. I, I really respect you, honestly, because I see where you're coming from. I'm a nihilist myself. 
I understand that you probably don't have the worst intentions in the world, but just certainly talk to people in a certain way that people don't like. And people, you know, it, it adds up over time. And I have no hate towards you. And I think a few people don't really have too much hate towards you, but you have done some things that have backstabbed people, have made feel, had have made people feel very bad about themselves. And that adds up. And when everyone around you wants to distance themselves from you and push you away, well, then you start to get backed into a corner. And your intelligence and your ability to do your job to the most powerful level can only get you so far. And soon, those walls crack around you. So I'm genuinely sorry for what happened to you. I really am. And I may not be able to tell you this in person. We're not that close. I may not be able to text you this, and quite frankly, if you see this video, I'm just gonna tell you right now, it probably isn't about you. But maybe it is, I don't know. Please don't talk to me about this unless you want to, but just know I have the best intentions, and I'm not saying anything about what happened. That being said, Let's get on to something else. Let's get on a more positive note. How do we stay two, two steps ahead? Well, I want you to listen to yourself. I want you to listen to yourself and say, the way I'm talking right now, the way I'm laughing, the way I'm, I'm creating jokes with people, the way I'm, I'm speaking with people, am I making their day? Am I making them laugh? Am I making them angry? Now the first two I would hope that you're trying to do. The sec the well the third one, I would hope that you're trying to minimize as most as possible. I hope that you're minimizing the, the capacity to piss people off. Pissing people off is not a magical, wonderful thing to do. Actually it's how you get fired. It's how it's how friends just block you. And quite honestly, even if you're the nicest person in the world, if you don't communicate with someone properly, ethically, and morally justified, and in the right way, in the right tonalities, um, in the right social cues as well, I'm gonna push you away. There's one person in my life right now that doesn't have any discipline. And quite frankly, I'm on a journey right now, a path to better to better discipline and habits. So, with that being said, this person is not on the same level as me. Now, I wanna bring them up with me, but I'm not strong enough yet where I trust myself to be able to work with them and not lose myself with them. There's many times where I've gone to the gym with you and we've only done half of my usual workout and we're walking out the door. I don't want to make you feel bad about yourself, so we leave. But I've now missed out on my workout because of you. I'm not too serious about it, so it doesn't matter. But there's a certain point where you're bringing me down with you. You're dragging me down with you. And I'm starting to notice that some of my friends, well, I do keep them at an arm's distance because I'm not sure on how they're going to bring me down. There's certain friends that I go, okay, I like you as a friend. I love you as a friend. I wanna keep you as a friend. I want you to, to, to improve yourself every day like I am. And by the way, before these videos, I've always thought this mantra is learn something every day. Kill who you were yesterday. Change your past, Be you know, make your own destiny. It, it's not just fluff. It's really something that I've always taken to heart is be present in the moment, learn something every day, and appreciate every day. You have to. Even if you hate your day, even if you, you hate your life, at least enjoy your day. At least say, well, I, I did one good thing today. I got a protein shake. They, they cost a little bit more, but it tasted amazing in comparison to my protein powder. Or maybe I went to a trip at Aldi and I got these cookie dough protein bars and they taste amazing. 
That was yesterday. So these little things in life can really make you feel better, make you feel happy. And when you feel happy, you start talking to people, you start making jokes, you start bringing other people's days up with you. And ultimately, when you bring other people up with you, it compounds. It, it's like compound interest in finances. When you bring other people up with you, they bring you up. And then at the end of the day, you said, yeah, I made like six or seven people's day today. Maybe in small ways, but I did make them smile. And that means something to me. That makes me happy. I said someone's name that it was like, uh, Christiani, I said Christiani correctly. It was something along those lines. And she was so overjoyed that I said her name right. But all I did was take the second to read out her name in my head and go, yeah, it's probably said like Christiani. That is not her name, but I'm just saying it's somewhere along those lines. But in the moment, I read her name and I said it out loud in the correct way. And she appreciated that. And I made a few jokes on it. And I said, well, you know, no, uh, you know I'm that guy. You know I can do it. You know I'm going to get your name right. Oh, what do other people say? What? How do they say your name? Oh, come on. They need to take a few English classes. That's what they need to do. So these little things that you can do, it, it's, it, it's improvisation. It's making jokes with people, having fun. Because if you're not thinking on the spot, if you're not witty, if you're not you know, making jokes and things like that, having some humor in your life, first of all, your day is going to suck. Second of all, you're going to feel like a robot. Your day is going to drag on. Third of all, like I said, humans are social creatures. If you talk to them like a robot, they're probably going to treat you like a robot. And from Johnny Five, uh, the movie, they beat his ass up. Excuse my language. But they beat him up. They're like, oh, is that a robot? New York, that's uh, Johnny Five uh, Two, or however it, or uh, uh, Special Five, or something like that. I forgot the name. But search up Johnny Five, uh, uh, I Stay Alive, or something like that. Your movie will pop up. That's a classic, by the way. But the second movie, they're in New York, and they try to beat up the robot because they don't understand him and people fear what they don't understand man I'm going all over the place the point is is you need to see ahead and you you can actually read on somebody the type of person they are and usually you start out positive first of all positive comment a joke something witty something fun a smile a, a certain name just make any kind of comment with a positive attitude and I promise you the way they respond is exactly who they are if they respond positively which is about 85% of the time you're in for a treat this person is reacting to you change your inflections of your voice talk in a different way change the tone of your voice your volume use your hands a lot present yourself you know, look a little pretty, look a little majestic, get some bling on, get some, well, I don't have my rings on right now from the gym, but maybe uh, go to the gym a little bit, look a little sexy if you know what I mean. The point is, is that these are things that you can do in your life that make yourself look better. So your first impression is very good. So even those 15% of people that are angry, typically, or nihilistic or, or maybe pessimistic when they first come into contact with you they say I'm having a bad day but this guy he looks like he's on top of things maybe he's gonna be smart maybe he's not going to piss me off so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt so now 10% of those people have now been put toward the positive side just by your first immediate comment this guy seems to know what he's doing, so maybe I'm not going to be a little bit rude to him today. Maybe I'm going to talk to him positively, even though I'm not really feeling it. And then those last 5% of people, that last 5% is going to do one of two things. You're going to have to convince them to be positive, which is hard work. You have to work on your communication for a long time 
to convince those people to be positive or they cannot be changed. So you need to have an unshakable level of customer service uh, uh, speak. And that means that no matter what they say to you, you keep your voice here. You don't swear to them. You don't say anything negative. You don't come off the wrong way to them. Your voice inflections are on point. There is nothing, there's not a shred of negativity in your voice, your facial expressions, your your tonality, your, your hand movements or body language. Nothing in your body language should be negative. So that later, when they have problems with you, they might either, one of two things, they'll either talk to your boss and say, I need to see your manager. You did nothing wrong, and that means that you're gonna be able to go home today and be like, yeah, I approached that situation fine, that person was mean to me, but whatever. And when your boss asks you about it later, you can say, well, yeah, they're doing this and this and this, but I held my cool. Boom. By tomorrow, you'll forget about them. Now, if you respond back to them and you get pissed off and you fight back, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have to deal about it. You're going to have to deal with them in the moment. They're going to get more pissed off. They're going to talk to your manager. You're going to have to explain to your manager everything. And then you're going to go home and think about it for the next three months and how you messed up and how you probably should have approached that a little bit differently and how that, that person was mean to me. I wasn't in the wrong. And then after the three first three months, you realize maybe if I approached that differently, we would have had a better outcome. So these are things that you need to change in your life. These are things that you can do to be two steps ahead. And when you start to, to really listen to yourself and how you speak in the moment, you're going to be able to understand, okay, don't overthink it. That's, that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm saying is, is that you need to understand how you come off to people. And buddy, my best friend, if you're watching this, you know who you are. You need to do better. All right? This isn't, this isn't just me going through a phase of, of trying to learn how to communicate better. This is for me. This is for you. And this is for everyone out there like you that needs to learn how to communicate better because the value of communication is very big. So don't discount your stuttering. Don't discount that, that you're a little shy or you're a little introverted. Don't discount you going on your phone when you should be talking to someone instead. I am not infallible. I understand that I have made mistakes in my life. I've come off wrong to everyone in any way possible. But, I'm working on myself and I'm trying to improve every single day. So, with that being said, discipline over motivation, requiescat in pace, and kill who you were yesterday. Don't be that person. Be you today. Be different today. Improve who you are and strive for greatness. But don't be motivated at all from this. Anyways, I. Hope you have a good one, and uh, I hope you do all right. I'll see you.